I'm Tom Ray, and this is my art podcast. On this episode of the podcast, I get the chance to meet... My name is Mike Leroy, and I'm an artist. I'm from Racine, Wisconsin. I've been in Madison for about eight years, I believe. How did you end up here? I came here for uh, college. I ran track for two years. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was a former track and cross-country runner myself. Oh, nice. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I came. Uh, I was a sprinter, so I did like the... 100, 200, 400, and things like that. See, I was the long distance. I couldn't do the sprints. It was like I could do them, but everybody was better at them than I was. <laughs> Anything further than a 400, oof, I, I can't really? do it. Oh. Yeah. So how did you get into that? I've always been a runner, I believe. Very early on, we would race at recess, and I always found out like I was I was the fastest so I just kept going and uh eventually yeah came to UW. Did you actually come here because of track? I came here for track. Art was never really something I thought I could be uh, like an artist. Really? Yeah, I I just like to run and I thought like this is it, like this is what I want to do. And art was always that thing that I would do on the side just for fun, yeah. you know? Yeah. And uh one day I bought a really big canvas and I, I just bought some paint and just went crazy and fell in love. A little after, maybe my sophomore year in college, I yeah, I, I found a paint, uh, a canvas on sale and I was like, oh, this is really cool. And I bought it and fell in love. Before that, you had not done anything else or no, you were? I've done, I've done things, but I completely became an artist at that moment. Like I, I stopped running. I yeah. fell in love with it, but I've always been an artist. Like I remember drawing on the desks in elementary and things like that. <laughs> Some of my pieces actually, I believe second and third grade, went to a local children's museum in uh, Racine, Wisconsin. What kind of stuff were you doing in second grade? What kind of style? Um, it was, I believe, an owl. Uh, we tried to mimic stained glass. And yeah, we made an owl. I made an owl. Um, and the second one was a little hippo and clay. What were your influences back then? When I went home, that's all I did was draw. And I never made that connection like this. I'm an artist. But I would always just mimic items that I had around the room. I would draw books and shoes, cartoons. If I'm watching cartoons, I would I would draw, you know, Mickey Mouse and things like that. How did it evolve once you got into high school? My friends kind of really supported me and they saw that that's what I like to do in my spare time. And I was very interested in it. They would have me draw on their notebooks that they would like their brand new notebooks for school really? okay. yeah so i was like oh this is cool I like at your first commission work yeah my first exactly <laughs> yeah just like hey like um i got eight new spirals like do you want to do something i would do artwork for all my friends most of the time it was yeah you can do whatever like just have fun i was really into graffiti at the time when i was younger so a lot of my graffiti my friends would be like oh can you do my name on my math notebook I was just influenced around graffiti and my best friend was really into graffiti and that's all he would do yeah so I kind of like got like a secondhand style and kind of just kept evolving I still to this day I try to tap into graf graffiti a little bit but you know that's not really a style that I want to do all the time <laughs> yeah it's different. Were there artists that you followed and that kind of evolved into other artists that you followed? Like who were some of the influences in that category that led to others? I would say graffiti art kind of led to like, what is the opposite of this? Like people always said like graffiti is meant for, you know, the streets. So I never really thought it could be in an art gallery. And that's what I thought at the time was an artist. And I was like, okay, so what is the opposite of this? So I discovered artists like Jean-Michel Basquiat, Dali, and Warhol, and like Jeff Koons. And I was just like, wow, like look at all these different styles. Like you can truly just be yourself and create. The friends of my parents, they would let me do things on their wall or, you know, they would have oh, like a, yeah, like a lot of my friends had moms that own businesses mm -hmm. and it was like, okay, let's can you paint some leaves or can you paint a tree or something like that for us? Yeah. Like, yeah, I can do that. So um, I think that's how murals started. What was one of the first ones that you painted? I believe it was a tree. If I'm just doodling, I, I draw trees. I don't know. I just, they're fun to do and they look cool when you finish them. So yeah. 
I think someone saw that and said, yeah, like, can you do that in my new business I'm opening? It's like, yes. Is it still there? I'm not sure. That was early high school, I believe. Looking at your stuff, there is actually a lot of tree type stuff. I mean, you said it was easy to draw, but there's got to be something that draws you to it. I think when I see a tree or I create a tree, it's just a symbol of freedom. And it's just time pauses and I can just zone out and just create something from nothing. Which is kind of what a tree. <laughs> I realized that as you're saying, I'm like, damn, um, I've noticed a lot of butterflies in your work recently too. It was the ears of elephants that oh, had man. butterflies in it. Now that's mixed media art, right? right? I, I want to say that I, and it's really hard to discern when I'm seeing something you post on Instagram, that's actually really there or something that right. you might've made. Yeah. So, so tell me a bit about this sort of digital collage work that you've been doing. Over the past three years, I would say I've been teaching myself Photoshop and photo manipulation to really dive into my creativity mm -hmm. because there are no limits when you combine technology and art. So I'm creating these moments in my thoughts. Yeah, an elephant with butterfly ears. For social media, I try not to mimic exactly what is going on in reality i try to skew it in some sort of way and sometimes i take it to the extreme for yeah. sure <laughs> i want my social media experience completely separate from my daily thoughts and thought processes and what i do you're separating it in the sense that would you say it's more like you have an artist account and a personal account no i just i'm not trying to mimic reality this entire brand for my social side is one big imagination, like creation. Is there something that led you to this thought process? I'd be curious as to what led you to think that way. Well, social media, you're in charge of your own image. So why not create a gallery type image? Why not have your social media accounts be a, a piece of artwork as well? If you look at brands, they hire someone to run their social media to create their tone and their image and if you just take that and apply it to yourself you can really mold your creative imagery as far as social media calling back to when you were saying the artists that kind of transitioned and influenced you and a lot of those like dolly warhol they they had public personas that they also did as well and a lot of everything they did was presented in a certain way you go to warhol where he had his you can recreate things and mass produce them mm -hmm. and it can be art dolly had his i'm walking an alligator like it's my pet dog <laughs> but you know things like that like their personal lives were just as fascinating as the work right. that they did yeah. and i'm reading into it myself here just listening to what you're saying so i don't want to put words in your mouth but is that kind of what you mean am i understanding that right yeah I take the social media side of life, treat it just as if it's a piece of my artwork. At some point, I can have a, like a book or a slideshow in, of all these different platforms that are created for that market. So my Instagram is completely different from my Pinterest. My Pinterest is a piece of its artwork in itself, and my Instagram is another piece. So if you step back and take a look at all the images and all the brands, you can see like those are in itself pieces of art. A lot of the medium that I have seen you work with, aside from the, the digital yeah. stuff, has been paint-based, but it's different ways that you apply it. So what would you say is your preference? Would it be with brush or with spray can? It moves and shifts. Um, right now I'm really into spray paint. I just like the way that it feels as an art piece. It gives it a nice, rough, urban touch. Mm -hmm. And that's really what I want right now. But other times I pick up a paintbrush and I just can't put it down and complete a, a big piece with it. But I would say I like the interior wall paint. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. that's, that would be my first choice. You get a lot of it. It's really smooth on a brush. I never thought of that, that you get them in big buckets. Yeah. <laughs> big buckets. <laughs> You were actually working on a mural before you came here today. What was the project you were working on before this? A dance studio um, just off of State. It's called Barrio. They've been open for a while, but they opened up a second studio in the same building, Studio B. And yeah, we just put this really cool 
energetic piece in there and uh, I'm going to finish it up tomorrow. Did they contact you or do you know them? I think they found me through social media. You've done a lot of mural work. How do you get this work? I am tell you, I take social media very seriously. Yeah, everything that I put online is very strategic. You've never approached anybody or you had to have approached some people. Never. No, no. I, wow. This is, I treat it just like once I decided I wanted to, wanted to be an artist, I completely turn my thought process into a business. I think social media is very important right now. And if you know how to use it correctly and you don't waste your time, it can be very beneficial. You've created a logo and it's strewn across everything. And I've even seen you've put it on things that you wear. You've put it on pieces that you put out. You've started putting it on your yeah. digital stuff. So how did you decide on this logo and, and when did you decide to start using it? Someone very important to me drew it for me. It was my design, but I wanted it in that person's handwriting almost. I, I knew I wanted this triangle for some reason. I don't, I don't really know why. But I said, like, hey, like, I really want, when I see this, I want to remember you, and I want to feel this. I want to create this feeling every time I make something. Yeah. I used my Adobe skills and, you know, fixed it in a way that I thought was best fit for a logo and well the reason why I went with the logo is because I also I'm into you know icon iconic logos like Coca-Cola I think Apple has a very strong logo I'm just inspired by that art so I, I, uh, I was like I want one of these more of the show after this break What are some of the opportunities you've gotten uh, since you decided to actually choose art when you when you realized that this could be a thing? Before that, you were like you couldn't do this as a career. I'm very interested in technology, so I became the artist in residence at a local startup, 100 State. What's that? It is a co-working space. It was right on 100 State. That's actually where I had my first art show and then became the artist in residence and... I did murals inside the building, so that kind of led to meeting other startups, and that kind of like created a snowball. How did you even hook up with them in the first place? I think I heard about a show that they were having, mm -hmm. and that was the first show that I was invited to when they were at 100 State, right before they moved. And then when they moved, they asked me if I would take this opportunity to be an artist in residence, and I thought that was really cool. And I was surrounded by startups, and I just fell in love with that vibe. Yeah. You know, being around other entrepreneurs. What was the common background of most of the startups? Like, were they tech startups? Were they art startups? Yeah. That sort of thing. Mostly tech startups. Okay. And I think that's where I really felt a connection. Um, not only are they entrepreneurs, but they really understand tech and to, to a level that I definitely don't know. And they just created this energy that was very addicting. And I'm I really, yeah, I fell in love with that. What's something that you wish you knew how to do that you know would advance your career or advance your artwork or something you'd like to learn that you know would really, you'd be able to benefit from? I think right now I would love to learn from a business perspective how to shift and create something completely different, but as an art piece, so maybe like a restaurant or a hotel and can consider that a piece that. of art. So an actual entity. In this, in this idea, let's say, for instance, I create a business and want to use that as a backdrop and, you know, you can have coffee next to it or something like that. Yeah. Creating your own gallery in a sense and going, but it also is multifunctional where people could just come in to do regular everyday things that they would like. Correct. Yeah. Hot damn. You, I think you kind of blew my mind just mm -hmm. then. <laughs> it's, it's so simple, but so great. I love that. You any closer to starting that? Or I'd be curious to see if it's actually in the works. Well, everything that I do is kind of a step to that. And do you do art full time right now? Or are you also employed otherwise? No, I'm full time. You are. How long have you been doing it full time? I have been doing it since June of 2018. But I took a leave. I was kind of really burnt out from my first try at taking murals on as a profession. I did so many, I just kind of was really turned off. <laughs> so <laughs> I took a break. And um, that's when I kind of went to uh, digital work. Okay. But during that time, I invested 
all my earnings and I kind of picked up stock trading and things like that. So that's what I do. Wow. Damn. I kind of started doing that too, but not stock trading. Mine was more just like, I invest. I have a guy and I, and he goes like, this would be good. And I go, okay. So do you do it more involved in that? I, I invest in many different things though. I invest in artwork. Um, I just bought a piece from a really cool artist, Wisby. He makes these gummy bears and Oh, yeah. And yeah, he's I saw a piece in Chicago. I think it was orange and green or something like that. He he had a wall full of them. And I was like, man, like I really want this. And that became my first art piece as an investment. So I've heard people say art is an investment. What how? How how is that in, like I know there's probably just like some simple piece that I'm missing, but I get there's you buy art and then you have art. Mm-hmm. So how how is it an investment? What ways do you go about to make it one? Well, if you look at art as an investment you have to really get to know the artist and their work to a level of understanding that you can say okay this guy or girl is great right now but I know that they will be bigger Mm -hmm. so I believe in your vision I see what you're doing and I appreciate it and I would love this piece and there you go. I don't think of it as one day I'm going to sell it either. Mm-hmm. That's the that's the big thing. It's kind of like I believe in you. You inspire me, so let me pay for this token. Mm-hmm. And when I see it and walk by it, um, it gives me the energy to do what I want to do. Is there? And I'm not saying this is what you do at all, but you've got my mind working here. And in the same sense, you're right. You're selling it would be like, well, then I don't have it anymore because you also appreciate it. But it could be something where it also becomes, say, like you have the shop that you're talking about, the building you talk about, and you have this collection of actual artwork from the original creators that have grown in value. And then it becomes a piece that actually adds value to the building that you make. Exactly. Exactly. If you look at it like that, I think you can make some pretty cool investments. It's good for, you know, passing down. If you look at any big collectors, they pass down their collection and sometimes it's newsworthy you know that's how you just begin a really cool collection what would you say is the most difficult thing about what you do i know that you said you got burnt out in the murals i'm assuming you must have learned something from that to help fix that in the future i'm really taking my time i the more time you put into artwork i think you can take it to a level that you wouldn't even have expected. So I'm just taking my time in between murals. I just, I find other ways to stay creative. You know, right now I'm making like collages and I'm working on t-shirts and clothing and things like that. So Mm -hmm. just keep a nice rotation. The t-shirts and clothing, how are you going about those? Are you doing print on demand? Are you actually having them created? Like what's the background on that? Again, with that, I'm also taking my time and I want to piece together different styles so there will be direct to garment there will be hand created pieces like there will be a line of different styles that's not just just one how do you manage the time i manage it all in my head really yeah (laughs) Uh, i'm getting more of the impression that you're like wickedly smart right now not that you not that i shouldn't have gotten that impression but still like you're managing it in your head yeah i just think i just take my time i'm lucky i got here on time today (laughs) yeah i can kind of when I i see a space i can instantly visualize what I want there. So I can kind of strategically figure out timing so I don't waste time. And so I can get it done as quickly as possible, but as at the same time, take my time. Just made me think of one more thing. When you're making the murals, I recently saw that there's a a Peter Crisco. I've talked to him in the past and he was part of the, there were murals around town that people were making on the back of buildings. And he did one with a street artist from either Chicago or Milwaukee. And they were mapping it out. And I was like, how do you know where it's going to go? So how are you mapping these out? You're not just doing that in your head too, are you? Yeah, most of them are freestyle. Really? For sure. Yeah. Even that one with the big C and the the different lines going on the blue background. Oh, yeah. So that was for Clocked is also another startup. I took a piece of yarn and I wrapped it to a thumbtack. And I just created a circle and then I created the C and filled that in. But the lines are all freehand. I wanted a really clean C, nothing like graffiti at all. Again, I have a really nice, fresh, clean, sharp uh, feeling. Okay. Yeah. And when you do these murals, I mean, people, they usually want to see sketches. So you, you at least give them a concept beforehand, right? Or do you just go, let me do my thing? Yeah. So right now I 
I visualize the concept in my head and then I and I create it digitally so they can see it as well. The one I did today, that was all freestyle. Yeah, sometimes they're just like, yeah, let's, you know, that's what art is. And some others, others want to see it first to also customize for sure and say, oh, you know, we, th we want it bigger. How about that? Right. <laughs> so yeah, sometimes I'll do that. You can learn more about Mike by visiting his website, MikeLeroy.com. The music for this episode is from the song Just In Case by my band Lorenzo's Music, and you can hear more of that at Lorenzo'sMusic.com. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to this podcast at my website, TomRay'sWebsite.com, or search for Tom Ray's Art Podcast on Spotify or wherever else you get your podcasts. I'll be back with another episode next week, so until then, so long.